Okay, the microphone is live. We, oh, look at that. Um, that's going to have to wait. Okay. All right, guys. Let's do this. On your mark, get set. Oh, we got people in the, people are here, Mama. In the house. Look over here. Oh, This sorry. way. This way. I will. <laughs> I, okay. Hi. Hi, everybody. Hey, it's Brad. And Krista. And we're going to share some, uh, well, planning time. We have a big family. We have seven kids. There are six at home right now. Mm -hmm. And every once in a while, we'll pick up a stray that we have to feed. Which is entirely okay. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but we go through a process every month in order to save some money. Benjamins. Save some money. Honey. And um, we basically plan out our entire meal plan for the whole month. And we do that because we found that we can save a lot of money when you buy in, in bulk for certain things, not other things. Right. Uh, but the, sh the stores, and we're going to share with you guys from scratch how we do it. Here, we'll even show you the, the close-up of what we got going on there. Old hands. Old hands. <laughs> That's okay. So we are going to do this interactive. That way, you guys can ask questions and make suggestions, and also we're going to share with you some of our recipes that are really, really cheap, but are very, very good. Yes, yes. And we've got a few of our few of our cookbooks. Some of them, it's funny because Brad asked me to get out certain cookbooks. I'm like, oops, we those just have packed been them. packed away. <laughs> so I all some of the, we have some recipe books here in the office, and then some of them in the nice little cabinet you have above your stove. So those haven't been packed away yet. So we've got I've grabbed a few of those and some of our some of our favorites that we've learned or that we've got a few recipes from are actually the free ones. The free ones that we got when we were on Wick a long time ago. Yeah. Um when we had little babies and we were on Wick, these these cookbooks are really great. They made them and had handed them out and And they give you some healthy recipes yeah. in there. I will say though that um, one of the things that does surprise us a lot is the cost of fresh vegetables. Oh my gosh, yeah, it's insane. It used to be that, you know, it was only meat. Meat, meat, meat. That's mm -hmm. the only thing that was like your budget buster. Yeah. And and it can be, but for <laughs> just to give you an idea, there's a store here called Aldi, and they generally have at least a few times, you know, every other month, they'll have chicken for 69 cents a pound. Yeah. Oh yeah. But you can't touch tomatoes for less than a dollar a pound. No. So those are things you got to take into account because um, we basically do all of our shopping um, at the beginning of the month, like one big thing, and then we budget a little extra money, about a hundred dollars or so, for okay. fresh. Yeah. For fresh, not actually no, not oh, a week. Oh, not a week. Mm -hmm. Oh no. Okay. No. Oh, that's right. Yeah. No. Sorry. He does the shopping. Believe Sorry. it or not. Sorry, ladies. He does the shopping. <laughs> yeah. And so um, I basically try to, you know, we have a budget of about $500. Mm -hmm. And believe it or not, we can hit that mark almost every time without any problem if we're um, disciplined. Right. When we're not disciplined, what are you point at me for? <laughs> You're not disciplined. <laughs> I am more disciplined than you, sister. Yes, that's true. That's but, true. Because when I see Brad does the shopping, and when I get the rare chance to go shopping, ooh, I like this. Oh, I, I like that. I want those. I want some of those. Bonbons. I had, I bonbons. Don't buy bonbons. <laughs> I haven't had those in a while. In a while, because he does the shopping. He doesn't. <laughs> yeah, but we're in a, an odd situation now where chicken is less money than vegetables in a lot of cases. Really, really sad. Actually. And, um, well, for those of you who may not know, we do a homestead. It's not just a clever name, Big Family Homestead. We, yeah. um, well. We're in the process of moving to a new homestead, mm -hmm. but normally we would have fresh eggs that don't cost us but pennies. Uh, we would normally have um, milk, goat's milk, cow's milk. Um, we would make our cheeses. 
Uh, we would have a garden by now that would already be putting out a lot. And that, guys, those things are Huge. the big money savers. Huge savings, yeah. Because we, we process our own chicken. Mm -hmm. So, you know, when everything's said and done, it's like 25 cents a pound. Right. And, and those of you who will say, well, aren't you buying feed? Yes, we're yeah. buying feed, but we would budget $100 um, of money for our feed costs. We would never spend that much money, but that's what we would budget. And we would get from our goat, we would get a gallon of milk, or from both of our goats, we would get a gallon of milk a day, mm -hmm. which was for grace. And then from our cow, we would get three quarters of a gallon of milk every day. Um, so think about that. How much milk is a gallon of milk every day? Three dollars? Well, That's ninety dollars right there for milk if you bought a gallon of milk every day. Well, and not to mention that we uh, use raw, unpasteurized mm -hmm. milk because it's got the most health benefit right. to it. Right. Um, and in a lot of states, you can't even buy that. No. You have to have what they call herd, herd shares. shares. Yeah. Right. And if you were able to buy raw milk, it would be, what, nine ten dollars a gallon? Yeah, it's solid expensive. Okay. Think about the savings right there. I mean, even mm -hmm. if you were, okay, even if you were buying regular conventional milk, that is... I think it all be like a dollar fifty. So you're still spending mm -hmm. fifty, sixty dollars on on conventional milk. Yeah. And so we had a huge savings having a cow and having goats and, and, and having we will chickens. Again. We will again. Very soon. Um, so That's right. we're starting from scratch, Mama. Show them the uh, the the blank slate that we we blank start slate. out with. Here, let me go to this screen. There's right our off, blank slate. Right off the bat, guys, we start out with that Thursday mm -hmm. is leftover day. Yeah. And, um, well, let's talk about this. Because um, in the past, we have scheduled a leftover day. Mm -hmm. And then we've also experimented with having no leftover day. But then we don't uh, really uh, plan for lunches right because our kids will eat what's what was left over from the night or the two night two nights before they'll eat all of those for lunch so actually you know we'll, we're having this conversation live mm -hmm. um so what do you think has worked out better i mean um, in terms of money wise i think honestly it's having the lunches for or the, the leftovers for lunch mm -hmm. that works out better because um we're not using a lot of cheese or lunch meat true um I, honestly i don't have to make it i don't need to make as much bread yep. we only make bread now if we're having it with dinner which is awesome yeah it saves a lot yeah. of time i mean now the kids will have bread with um breakfast they'll have eggs um and toast and we still bagels. have we still have eggs from our chickens over we, a month ago actually we do still have um, a load of eggs we probably have well 10 dozen we at least 10 at dozen least. and they last a really long time guys so don't worry about them going bad <laughs> so do you want to go with leftover night or we're just going to do leftovers for lunch you know let's do leftovers for lunch okay and this will be an experiment too guys because next month when we do this again uh, we'll be able to tell you. We'll be able to come and say, this worked great, or it didn't work at all, yep. or man, we crashed and burned, and we had to spend an extra $100 in budgeting. Mm -hmm. But for right now, this is our blank slate. Blank slate. And now this, I didn't, I, I just made up a table on um, Google um, Docs. You just make a table, and then you just label them, and... Um, and that way you print out one and then you can mark it with whatever days um, you need. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and do that because today's Thursday. As Thursday. you're marking that, Mama, there's a question here yes. from, oh, where did I miss it? Victoria O'Connor, how long would you say farm fresh eggs last on average? Six months. If you don't wash them and you leave them out on your counter, they will last six months. But if you're buying them from a farmer's market, they will most likely have washed them. Mm -hmm. And the reason why you don't want to wash them if you're keeping them around is because there's a, there's a, a film that, that encapsulates the egg mm -hmm. that keeps anything nasty from getting in. Um, they will clean, the farmers will typically clean them because sometimes they get a little muddy, sometimes get a little poop on them. Mm -hmm. 
uh, and that's obviously not attractive to a com you know a right. consumer. But if you're truly farm fresh and they're not been washed, it'll last a good amount of time. Now, yeah. if they have been washed two mo two months maybe max, yeah, way on the high side, mm -hmm. I wouldn't go that long. Mm -mm. So okay, we're starting out. It is the month of June. Now, what we will typically do, guys, is we'll have. Oh, by the way, we're going to share some recipes with you. Mm -hmm. um, and, and we typically have some go-to recipes that we know everybody likes, then that are that are very affordable. And they're fast. And they're fast. Mm -hmm. And so um, I'm going to go ahead and call up one of the ones that I, I'm trying to control the computer, which is over there. Right. Uh, and here's one that uh, we do generally all the time. This is my favorite meal. Um, favorite recipe. Favorite recipe. It's easy. It's cheap. I hate the word cheap. It's frugal. Yeah. Because you can get a lot of this stuff on sale. Um, like the pound of the bow tie pasta. That's a dollar a box if you buy the store a store brand. Um, the kielbasa. At all these is cheap. At all these is two dollars. Yep. So. And I think it's more than 10 ounces. I think it's like 13 ounces. They're 14. Are they 14 ounces? Mm -hmm. Okay, so it's almost a pound of meat. The cans of tomatoes, they're, um, I think, 60 or 70 cents 50. a can. 50 cents a can. Okay. Yep. Um, onions, that's so cheap. Cream, well, for us, it was free until Just recently. recently. <laughs> um, so, yeah. That is one of the recipes that we automatically are just going to put on. So, Mama, go ahead and figure out where you want to have that. Okay. Um, and um, as we figure this out, guys, you want to go to the table cam there. As we figure this out, too, one of the things that we try to do is balance out, making sure you don't have too much pasta in a week or too much. We like Mexican food, so Mexican food in a week or too much Italian in a week or... Um, just making sure that you're spacing that out so that the, the meals that you're going to plan don't get boring to you. Right. And you don't want two Italian dishes in a row, in a row or even in the same week. It, it might get a little old. Melissa D. is asking if um, you can... Oops, wrong recipe. <laughs> if you I can don't substitute, see why you wouldn't. Yeah, you can substitute anything for that sausage. You could yeah. use ground-up turkey. <laughs> But, oh, come on now. <laughs> you could use Italian sausage. You could use, heck, you could ground probably beef. even use chicken. You could use ground beef if you want. I bet chicken would be really tasty in that. Yeah, I'll bet you you could. So, yes, And you know what? Is. If you want to go completely vegetarian, just make it meatless. Right. And that's another thing that we do, too, is we try to make sure that we eat at least a couple times a week um, meatless meals. Sometimes that doesn't work out just because you want meat. But we generally can have like spaghetti, bread, and a side salad. That is one cranking meal, and it costs us like six dollars to feed eight people. Right, right. Phoebe was just saying you can never have too much pasta, and you know what? You're right. And Ruth would agree with you. Ruth, that that's is her favorite. Her thing. favorite thing to eat doesn't noodles. matter what, what kind she, it, what kind it is, what's on it. She just wants noodles. Yeah. Yep. Okay. So we've got that one set. Um, now there's another recipe that we like to have a lot in that. Oops. No, that's not. That's not that's a recipe. That's not it, honey. Got that one. Here we go. Now yeah. this one is a little more entailed with stuff, but mm -hmm. the one thing that's cool about the, the, the Mexican kind of food is you can sub anything for anything. Oh my gosh, yeah. You know, you can whatever use floats your boat. Beans and corn, you can use um, you can use chicken, you can use beef, you could use turkey, you can you can it's whatever your family likes. Right. And the recipe you're seeing on screen right now, guys, believe it or not, this will feed our eight people mm -hmm. for about seven bucks. Mm -hmm. So that is not a budget buster. That is one that is really, really awesome. So, Mama, why don't you go ahead and find a spot for that to go? Okay. And one thing we'll all also do is we all we you have your arsenal of things that are cheap that are good, um, and you just automatically put them in. Like we're gonna have a spaghetti kind of meal at least every other week, and by that I mean, I mean realistically, 
Italian food's very, very similar. You've got your pasta, you got your tomato, and then you got a meat sometimes or not, mm -hmm. uh, unless you're dealing with like a cream sauce. Um, but we, we love the spaghetti, so, you know, and it's cheap. Yeah. So why don't you put a spaghetti on every other week, Mama? Okay. And it can be ziti. Um, lasagna gets expensive. Yeah, lasagna does get expensive with the, the mozzarella cheese. Mm -hmm. And we usually like to put cottage cheese in there because it is a lot it, it more inexpensive than ricotta. Yeah. Um, well, and Claire doesn't like ricotta, so, of course, we have to make our meals around what Claire likes. And of course, Claire. Like. She's <laughs> sitting right over there. That's not true. Yeah. No, I know. I'm teasing you, honey. Okay. Um, so, did you get the... Not yet. I'm looking... Write and talk, Mama. Write and talk. That's not hard. That's too hard to do. I can't we usually get this done in terrible. about 40 minutes, but we're hanging out with you guys, so we're prepared for it to be a little bit longer. Okay, so spaghetti. That's not an eye. That's me. Do you want like a ziti or do you want like some kind of baked? I think I want a ziti this month because I like ziti. Okay. Let me do that down here. Spaghetti All right. Bread. Fresh bread. Okay. Other stuff that we always generally have, we either have some kind of a taco salad or we'll have um, tacos or we'll have fajitas or we'll have burritos. Um, one thing that, that we've started doing is the quesadillas are nice and cheap because all you got to do is put some refried beans in there, a little bit of cheese and a little bit of topping and you're done. Yeah. Yeah. Um, there's a couple of questions. Um, uh, Phoebe's asking, what is ricotta cheese? Ricotta cheese is, um, it's kind of actually bland. It's, it's very something bland. you never want to put in your mouth. No, stop. <laughs> it, you can actually okay, make... Claire. Sorry, sorry. Mumble louder, please. <laughs> Mumble louder. Um, you can make ricotta cheese. Ricotta cheese is what's in cannolis. And you can make it sweet. Or you can make it savory. Or you can make it savory, and they put it on pizza or uh, calzones or lasagna. lasagna. Um, it's just a, it's a... It adds a creamy kind of thing to it. There's a special way to make this particular cheese. It's very smooth and creamy. Um, it's a very soft cheese, almost like a... It's a very soft cream cheese-like. You know, it's very easily spreadable mm -hmm. and kind of real gloopy. But... Yeah. Um, and then um, there's another question about um, do we have our budget um, food, our, do we budget separately for food storage? Yes, we do. Um, but we're in a different situation when it comes to that. So why don't you go ahead and start filling out some of the staples, Mama, okay. the Mexican and the okay. spaghetti. And, um, um, we have started uh, selling Thrive Life foods and they're freeze-dried foods long-term storable foods and they are awesome um, but one of the cool things about doing the thrive life as like we're called consultants so the way it works is if anybody buys something through our our website then we get a little commission for that but not only do we get a commission since we are you know technically we are uh, having a virtual party there are benefits that go with that and, and those benefits uh, are basically free food that comes back to you. So normally we would be budgeting, if we had not done Thrive Life, we would take a little bit of money every month, maybe $20, maybe $50, depending on how much extra we have. And we would put that into long-term food storage, you know, uh, and it would just be basically whatever we need. Mm -hmm. But since we've been selling the Thrive Life foods, we're getting so much free food, mm -hmm. we don't need it anymore. Right, right. And so, so and, and what's cool, too, is the variety. Mm -hmm. um, uh, you know, this is not a Thrive video. We can come back to that possibly. Uh, in, but moving on, other recipes that are staples that we have a lot. So here's another one, Mo. Yep. One of my favorite. Another fave. Ham and au gratin potatoes is yummy, yummy. So I'm going to put that down here. There you go. And what you've got, I mean, onions, they're a good stretcher, you know, because it adds flavor and it adds stretch. And one of the things, guys, too, is when it comes to any of these things that are dealing with meats, um, if you cut them really nice and thin, nice and small, 
That way, whenever you you get a bite of something, you get a little bit of that flavor in there. And you don't need to have big honking one inch by two inch pieces of meat um, to get that satisfaction. Uh, so I just realized we're, I'm going to move this up closer because we have that ham in the refrigerator Show that. from um, yeah, hold Friday. It up. Hold it up, my buddy. Yes, dear. Like yeah, yeah. I got this. Yeah. So there we are so far. Yeah, and we have some leftover ham from another. Yeah. Here's that recipe again. Um, but when you look at it, if you get your ham on sale, mm -hmm. that's not a big deal. Uh, and then, then the next expensive thing on that recipe is the cheddar cheese. Yeah, the cheddar cheese, which you can you can get on sale. Aldi has their cheese for, what, $2 a bag? Yeah, and it's yeah. a pound. It's a pound of cheese. It's a pound. And that would work out just fine. Mm-hmm. I, I know. Okay. I know. I'm reading as we go, baby. All right, all right. Okay. So now let's look at one of our other staples before we start venturing into new stuff. And oh, did we? We did the the ham. Oh, mm -hmm. here. This is a family staple. Yeah. This guy's. You can half this, and and we would actually half this. Mm -hmm. That's um. That's a lot of chicken mm -hmm. that you don't necessarily need to have, but. Chicken and dumplings or chicken and dumpling soup. Mm -hmm. um, chicken and dumpling soup is a lot different um, than the chicken and dumplings. Same same ingredients, but the way you prepare it is different. And I guess, you know what, I, I'm the one who usually makes that all the time. Yeah, you, you do a really good job with that because we've got our broth already made and mm -hmm. you just cut up um, the celery. chicken and the celery and carrots. Carrots, yeah. yeah we, don't, we don't put onions in it anymore. No, um, yeah, so that is an older recipe there. It is a very old saw. recipe, yeah. But all you need is like a couple pounds of chicken. You get you some broth. Oh, and that's what, this is a budget saver, 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 saver. Mm -hmm. Make your own chicken broth. Exactly. You know, when you get a whole bird from the store, save those carcasses. Yep. Throw them in a Ziploc bag, throw them in the freezer. Mm -hmm. When you get three or four of them. Or even broth. two of them, then you can fill up a big old pot. Yep. You put in some salt, some pepper, little celery, little this, little that, and then you can pressure can those. Yeah. And when we figured out how much it was costing us for the broth, it was almost negligible mm -hmm. for us to make it. It was literally like five cents per quart. Yeah. Um, yeah. The only thing we would have to buy is um, the celery. The celery and the carrots and mm -hmm. the onions. Um, and then spices is practically nothing. Yeah. And because we would save our carcasses from when we would process our own birds. Yeah. So depending on where you get your broth, that's what four bucks for a quart. Yeah, even for the organic broth, it's about four four fifty. So do yourself a favor. Start saving those carcasses and make your own broth. Pressure can it, yep. and that saves a ton of money for especially for things like. Well, soups, mm -hmm. um, but gravy. When you're making gravy, a chicken broth adds a lot more flavor than water. water. Yeah, yeah. And if you, you know, if you're roasting something and you don't have enough drippings to make the gravy, you know, the adding the broth to it is is amazing. Here's a great question from Love L Y S S. Do you increase budget around the holidays or select meals differently to fit your monthly budget? Now, here's the thing. We do plan for it to be a little more expensive, but we don't take and change the budget. What we try to do is, um, well, there's extra money that comes in. Mm -hmm. We sell homemade soaps, mm -hmm. and we sell homemade lip balms and hand creams and all that kind of stuff, yeah. and those sales go up, so it's like, hey, we got an extra 100 bucks. Let's do something a little bit nicer. Mm -hmm. We try to keep the basic stuff the same, and then we honestly just rely on God for those blessings. Right. And, you know, the kids, we have six kids at home, and, and they get to pick their birthday meal. And so we will make it. And usually, I mean, Caleb loves cheeseburgers. Yeah. And so, and you know, it's not it's not this super expensive meal that we make. It's It's usually the stuff that, we have a lot, mm -hmm. so that's that, and we don't take them out to an expensive restaurant. No, we, don't do and that. we just do special things here at home. God always provides mm -hmm. cheese in her apron, is correct. Mm -hmm. Um, one question here from um, 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 Hi, Kimmy. Joanne Green 
Does the $500 include breakfast, lunches, and snacks? And the answer is yes. yes. And we, we mentioned how we do that earlier because we used to do it where Thursdays would always be leftover day. You would just eat it all. But then we switched over from an experiment last month to decide, you know, okay, why don't we just eat our leftovers for lunches? And it's worked so far pretty good, and we're going to give it another shot this month. Yeah. So next month, we'll be able to come to you and say, no, this is really working, or it's not. Right. And we'll tell you. Right. You know, and we're finding, so far, we're finding that there's less going to waste. Yep. Um, we do have a few things that get pushed to the back that get forgotten about. Um, the, the, lesser, the lesser favorite meals. Right. They're kids, you know. And, and, but then for breakfasts, we have a... Um, a set amount of things that we get. Like we'll buy Cheerios, we'll buy Rice Krispies. Oatmeal. Um, we buy oatmeal. And that's about the only cereal type things we buy. Mm -hmm. We also, we have eggs still, thankfully, from our chickens. I like grits. Yep, you like grits. Um, we'll buy, um, we make yogurt. Mm -hmm. um, and that's, that's pretty much it. So it's, they pick and choose from what they are wanting. When they want an egg sandwich, they'll make an egg sandwich, you know, things like that. So, Yeah, and Mama's always making breads. So whatever we have a lot of, sometimes we can make French toast, and it really doesn't cost us anything because we have the eggs. Right. And she's made the bread, and that's, so that's a nice little treat. Yeah. All those things, and, and so to answer the question is yes. Believe it or not, we can feed that many people um, with about 500 bucks. Yep. So moving onward, what do we got there, Mama? Well, I mean, we have a couple of special things coming up this particular weekend, so this is easy planning for the weekend. Um, we have a get-together on Saturday um, at the uh, Caesar Creek State Park. Yeah. So if anybody is around here and would like to join us, please come. Um, we're going to have like a potluck-style yeah. meal. It's, um, it's for all of our channel All of folk. our friends, right. Um, so that's from 10 to 4, but so I already know what we're having on that day. Um, mm -hmm. Friday night, we're going to have a couple of guests Friday night. Folks that are traveling, and folks that, that are, are coming traveling. here, friends of ours. Um, so I think we're going to do campfire meals. We campfire meals, about that yeah. Last, week, last month. Yeah. Um, and then uh, actually the day after, we're having some folks over that are stayovers as well, but we're going to provide breakfast and yep. that'll be like, um, it's not uncommon for us to have breakfast as a dinner. Right. Right. Especially since the eggs are, you know, free for us practically. Mm -hmm. um, and you can you can take a piece of ham and do a whole dunk, bunch of stuff with it. Mm -hmm. um, we'll make breakfast burritos that are really great and really affordable because you've just got your scrambled eggs, some green chilies, uh, you've got some ham and then cheddar cheese. You're done. Yeah. So other recipes, Mama. Um, well, we had from, um, from these, um, are we busting out the cookbooks in a minute? Um, how about unstuffed cabbage casserole? We haven't had that in a while. How about, how about cabbage, unst how unstuffed about, cabbage, how about cabbage, un unstuffed cabbage casserole? Here's the thing. One of my favorite meals is stuffed cabbage rolls. Love it. It's just, you got like almost like a mini meatloaf inside cabbage and then you put it in a pan with carrots and potatoes and stuff but it's piddly it's a pain in the butt to make mm -hmm. and even though i do most of the cooking here she does that one i hate making and that she meal. does not like it because, because it's piddly it is piddly and the cabbage is so uh, but frustrating i found and modified a recipe called, that we're calling unstuffed cabbage casserole mm -hmm. So you've got your diced tomatoes, and you've got ground beef in there, and you've got your pieces of cabbage, and it's it's not as good as the real deal, but it is um, it's a concession, as yeah. long as I get the real thing once in a while. Once in a while. So go ahead, Mama. All right. Sweet. Find your spot. <laughs> Make All your right. mark. Yeah. There. Where are we going with that one? Oh, while you're finding that too, here's something also, guys. Um, well, let me click back here. Um, we will generally try to do easy meals, easy to prepare, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Those are generally the, the ones we'll try to make sure are very easy to prepare. 
We will also try to make sure that something fun happens on a Friday night or a Saturday night um, because we'll do like family movie night. Or we'll hang out by the campfire. Yeah. Yeah. And, and slash, or we might have guests over, you know, uh, we live near the go and batty channel mm -hmm. and it seems like we are either over there or they're over here at least once a week. <laughs> okay. Victoria, they want to know if they can clone you. Clown me. Yeah. He is I, a clown. I am a clown. He is a clown. Uh, no, I'm sorry. You can't clone him. Don't oh, <laughs> trust me. I broke the mold physically. I physically broke the mold when I was coming out of it. It was like a, like a, Stop. Stop. a fiery phoenix. <laughs> Spread my my arms and fly. Oh my lord! Caw! <laughs> <laughs> I'm like a wind up toy. Just forget about it. <laughs> so okay, other stuff, Mom. We we are really we're behind schedule here. It's because you keep talking. So, unstuffed cabbage casserole. Hey, I got an idea, guys. What are some of the, the menu plan things that you guys have that are your affordable meals? And I'll see if I can see some because that's what we're trying to do. Here, I'll put our recipes back up. But then you have to send us the recipe so we can make it. Or at least tell us. So, in the um, chat right now, go ahead and share some of yours with us. And I'll look and see if there's anything that looks really delicious. So, there's the creamy sausage and tomato pasta. It's a skillet, really, but yeah. yeah. Well, no. Oh, it's yeah. A no, skillet. I was thinking yeah. um, the unstuffed cabbage casserole. When's y'all's next cooking show? Tomorrow. Tomorrow at noon. Tomorrow at noon, mm -hmm. and we're going to be doing some baking and some other awesome stuff. Mm -hmm. My name is Brad, and I do all the shopping and cooking. Maybe you should rename your husband to Brad, and he will do the same. Well, that well, that, I mean, that happens to be interesting because that is my name. <laughs> All right. Uh, wanted to come to meet up with you and sing with you. Well, I am planning on bringing a guitar, and I know there are others who are bringing instruments. That is Isabel. Oh, cool. Do you ever make a bunch of freezer meals? Yes. Well, yeah. I mean, when we make like our when we make our uh, unstuffed cabbage casserole, we usually have enough stuff, and we mm -hmm. make two, mm -hmm. and we'll put that in the freezer. Um, Same thing with breakfast burritos. We'll make a Mountain oh, I make a mess of them. I think last time I made, I used six dozen eggs. Um, yeah. It took a long time to cook all those all eggs. All right. <laughs> we, we definitely need to put a tortilla soup on there, Mama. That's cheap and all delicious. Right. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to name some. We'll go ahead and do that. Okay. Um, and I'm going to name some of the recipes people are suggesting. Bologna gravy with mashed potatoes. We do that with ground beef. And that's great. And that should go on. Okay. That's... It's one of those things that you never really think about, but everybody likes. And, oh, yeah, with, like, nice garlic te Texas toast. Mm -hmm. Oh, come on. My inner chubby guy is jumping right now. Pizza rice casserole. That sounds interesting. I'll, I'll, I'll tell you, Mama. You, you're right, baby. You're right. Behave yourself. Kielbasa potato zucchini stir fry. Oh, we forgot about stir fry. Oh, yeah. Oh, my gosh. Brad came up with this recipe for stir-fry. Oh, it's so delicious. Grand, grandma's macaroni. So good. Um, grilled ham and cheese sandwiches, homemade fries, burritos. Oh, yeah. Can't go wrong with any of that oh, stuff right there. Kielbasa, potatoes, zucchini, stir-fry. Yum. Unstuffed bell pepper casserole. That sounds really good. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I like bell peppers. Although, I like stuffed peppers. I probably wouldn't stop burping for months. No, no kidding. Bell peppers are really good. I mean, the, the stuffed peppers, stuffed bell peppers. Corinne, and nice SOS and on garlic toast. I know what that is. Oh, I know what that is. My mom Yum. used to make that. But, oh, she made it out of that horrible, horrible, the sandwich meat that's like as thin as paper. Mm -hmm. It's like budding. I think it's called budding brand. That, yes. Yeah, and it's like yeah. 50 cents for this thing. And it was disgusting, <laughs> but she would make that, and it was SOS, bleep on yeah. a shingle. Because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. that's what it looked like. Exactly. <laughs> Poor man's hamburger. I don't know what that would be. I don't be. know what that is either. If you splurge on bacon, make gravy and drippings out of it over toast. Mm, yeah. 
Deep fried fajitas? That sounds He's awesome. asking what that is. What is unstuffed cabbage casserole? Um, cut up pieces of cabbage, ground beef. Rice. Rice. Cooked rice. Diced flavored tomatoes. Mm -hmm. And Onion. it's just like that. And you, you, it's a casserole. Yep. It's really good. It's tasty. Sausage and bean casserole. Andrea, you got to send me that recipe. Where? Sausage and bean casserole. Yes, please. All right, so we need to keep going, Mama. Okay. Hey, he provides homestead. All right. Oh, you know one recipe that we came up with that was fun for the kids um, that has kind of become a hit is t the idea of a quesadilla, but instead of having it like Mexican, you have it uh, Italian. Mm -hmm. So instead of refried beans, you put some pizza sauce, tomato sauce. Instead of cheddar, you're going to use some mozzarella, and then you can put pepperoni in there. Yep. So let's, yeah. let's definitely have like a Friday night. Okay. Let's skip that one yeah. there. Um, and that's great because then you can just dip it in whatever kind of sauce you want. Pizza, we awesome. call them pizza dias. Pizza dias. Diane Grant, I love shepherd's pie. Yes, I do. Put that on there too. And that was what Hope asked for her birthday. Yeah, that's her favorite. Yeah. Taco salad. Oh, we definitely. This last time you made it with sliced potatoes. Yes. It was really, really tasty. Like uh, if you took took a potato like this and went like this with them, nice and thin, thin sliced. like a less than a quarter inch th thick, like smaller. Like all gratin style. And I laid it out like uh, a lasagna. Mm -hmm. it was really and that was good. really nice. It was really good. Okay, so other stuff. We've got about half our month filled, looks like. Yep. So, okay, here's another thing that we try to do, guys, is I'm grabbing for... Cowboy suit. Ooh, see, we got to start looking this, for Saturdays. This was a gift from a special friend. Uh, JM Nuthouse gave that to us when she came up. And I, there are so many delicious Dutch oven recipes mm -hmm. in there that I, I don't even know where to start. Well, and one thing that we do, guys, during the summer, we'll cook outside uh, generally at least once a week. Mm-hmm. We, we're trying to get better at, you know, cooking over a campfire, those ideas kind of thing, because we're, I guess we're homesteaders, but we're also in that prepared mindset. Yeah. And there have been many times when we haven't had electricity for a long time, and I, I want to be able to be, you know, a good cook, even if the lights don't go yeah. on, you know? Yeah, okay. Um, Martha, you got to fill us in on what cow cowboy stew is. Oh, that's kind of... You throw it all in, isn't it? I don't know, but there's a couple of people asking what cowboy stew is. Okay, so we got to find something. Oh, my lanta. Check this out, guys. This this might break our bank, but it's called Texas Stuffed Steak. Right there. Bam! And you've got boneless round steak, butter, onions, seasoning, vegetable oil. Mushroom soup. We don't do cans of stuff, but then you put it all in the crock or the um, the okay. cast iron. Cook it over there. Oh yeah, and you know what you could do with that? You could put it over fresh bread. Oh, that'd be delicious. Break the bread okay. up in little pieces. We're making this. Give me that. Okay, so we'll have to figure that out. And you could probably substitute ground beef for that. Totally. Or even pork. Yeah, totally. Oh, if you went with pork, and instead of the um, mushrooms. Uh, you went with more of a barbecue-y kind of flavor. Ooh, yummy. See? Always trust the, the, sage won't work trust the chubby that. guy for your recipes. <laughs> this is how it works. All right, so we're going to do that on a Friday or Saturday? Saturday. Let's do that on a Saturday. So Texas stuffed steak, and it's like a, a cast iron meal. All right, other stuff people are suggesting. Make meatballs and use them in barbecue sauce, marinara, and stroganoff. I love it. Um... MS Silver Kate, have you uh, thought about a rocket stove? We have a rocket stove, and I've even built a rocket stove. Um, but we got one from a company called Silver Fire, and it's different. It's it actually uses forced air instead of a traditional rocket stove. Yeah, and it's really really great. But we have not done enough cooking on it, and I no. do need to get on that. Yeah, we. Yeah, I, I'm not a fan of how um, uncontrolled the the heat is. Yeah. Right? You can't yeah. really you can't yeah, really control so. that in any way. Okay. <laughs> so I'm still scanning for good uh, recipes while we hit our book. Did you see the size of this book, by the way, guys? 
<laughs> These are recipes that we've had and made for years. Well, and probably a third of them we don't even make anymore. Well, what about, Mama, let's do, since we have plenty of chicken, because we process our own chickens, mm -hmm. let's make sure that we get, like, some chicken fingers on a, you know, for the kids. Okay. Or, oh, 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 bang, bang chicken. If you guys, you, if you know of a restaurant chain called P.F. Chang's, this is a, a knockoff recipe of theirs that, that's called pan, uh, Bang Bang Chicken. And it's just really nice little breaded, lightly breaded. With panko breadcrumbs. Mm -hmm. Makes them really crispy. Real light, mm -hmm. but then it's the sauce. Mm -hmm. It's a chili sauce that you use with mayonnaise and um, chili. Well, you use the Frank's chili sauce, some mayonnaise. The sweet chili the, sauce. Yeah, the sweet chili sauce. Some mayonnaise, um, a little bit of Frank's hot sauce. And there's some other things, but there's, I can't remember what this, what's in it. Um, but it's it's got that hot and sweet flavor to it. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's so good. Yep. Not super hot. But Tasha, if you have Living on a Dime's cookbook, cookbook, their meatballs are amazing and so easy. The funny thing, Tasha, is you can keep type of we keep packed it away. I right before we started, I went and said we need to get Living on a Dime cookbook out because a lot of their recipes. We every I'm, I'm like yes I would make that mm -hmm. yes I would make that yes I would make that yep. and so we were going to show you guys as a resource um, we don't we don't get any money or anything if they if you buy that cookbook we're just friends with Tara and Mike they're really good people and and it is definitely worth the buy so yeah definitely I don't I mean Claire's really fast I think she's grabbing the link but that's that's that helps benefit their family uh, let's see as I'm okay this looks really through. good. Chicken breasts. Well, what is it, Marvel? They, they, it's, sorry. Or put it put it in that one here so it's put a little closer. Seat. And what is it called? Oops. There we go. Chicken Angelico. It's. Let's see, let's see if I can get this is another one of those cast iron recipes. Yeah. And what's in it? Chicken breasts, breadcrumbs, garlic, salt, mar. Uh, no, we would use totally. We would use butter. Butter. Munster cheese, mushrooms, eggs, black pepper, and. Uh, chicken broth and I think you will dip yep that's right you bread the the chicken breasts and then you brown them in the butter spread put the mushrooms over the top and the cheese oh yeah for the great the chicken broth over the that top sounds of it. really good oh yeah we're so making we're gonna it. try that for sure oh we forgot about another one of our staples that definitely helps keep the uh, budget in check and that's red beans and rice. Mm -hmm. Mama's recipe um, came from her mom and from her mom's mom. Mm -hmm. And it's it's red beans in a, in a, in a Latin gravy that's sofrito and um, what's the green stuff? No, that that's is the sofrito. sofrito. Yeah, was, that's why I was confused. And sazon. Yeah, sofr sofrito is a, um, it's a combination of Green bell peppers, red bell peppers, tomatoes, garlic, parsley, and cilantro. You grind it all up. You blend it all up, and then I put it, okay, you guys are going to laugh. I put it in the breast milk storage bags because I can measure out exactly how much I want. They lay flat. They lay flat. They're sterile, and you then when I them. want to, and then you freeze them, and then when I want to get it out of there, I just run it under hot water. So it's winning really nice and then there's the sasson which is another seasoning that goes into it is um coriander uh paprika cumin, cumin. no garlic actually, and salt is there cumin yes okay yeah i forget all right mama you got it right oh yeah yeah okay so red beans and rice find a home for that and um oh here's here's the bang bang chicken let me try and pull it out of our thing here. Uh oh, Claire got it. <laughs> I got it. Okay, let's go. Just to give you guys a look at it. We'll show them the picture. Yeah. And see, I've, I, I find these recipes online, and then I adjust the sauce to how I like it, or how we like it. Okay. Um, so. All right. Yeah. Now, um, another thing that we generally have at least at least every other month 
is what we call skyline. Mm -hmm. uh, and so find a home for some skyline. But what skyline is, if you don't know Cincinnati area, they have this chili that's not really chili and it's not really spaghetti. It's uh, different. It's it's um, it's kind of well. There's all kinds of strange things in there. There's cinnamon. There's chocolate. Yeah, it's uh, really weird. It's not a Texas style chili, but they'll put it over spaghetti noodles, and you'll have cheese and beans and onions, and then they call it. That's like a five way. Um, so you got all those elements. But mm -hmm. we'll take our chili. Because we like our Texas yeah, we style like chili. Tex, uh, Texas style. And we'll put that over noodles. So one quart of the actual chili stretches to feed the whole family for Skyline. Yep. So find a home for some Skyline. I Mama. did. All right. I'm Looking here, I'm going it. through. Oh, here's a great recipe that's pretty cheap, too. Oh, cheap and fast. And delicious. Yes. And that's, uh, chicken pepper cash. Yeah. It's a Hungarian thing. Here, I'll go to that camera. It's a uh, pressure cooker meal, and it is done in about a half an hour. And so, if you get your if you get your chicken on sale at Aldi's for sixty seven cents a pound, mm -hmm. you can feed yep. a family our size for five bucks. Yep. It's it's got the paprika in there. And a lot of seasoning, and you put um, you cook the chicken up in the in the pressure cooker, mm -hmm. and then uh, you'll cook some noodles separately, like wide egg noodles. Mm -hmm. You put your chicken out, and it's got a little bit of sour cream on the top. Oh, that's so good. Bam. It's so good. It is very good. So chicken paprika cash. I'm looking here, guys. Who else? Oh, you know we haven't had sandwiches in a while. What about like um, grilled cheese and soup? Grilled cheese and soup, cheap and delicious. Oh, and don't forget, we also we try to have salad. Well, we've changed what we do with salad. We used to do salad like at least once every other week, and it was just that's what you had. That was the meal. Mm -hmm. We'd have salad and bread. Yep. Done. But we've started because Claire likes her kale and Claire likes all her healthy stuff, which is great. Yeah. Um, so we started having side salads as part of the meal um, at least three or four times a week. Mm -hmm. And so that's nice. Yeah. Um, here's a question from Melinda. How much do you estimate per pound your chickens that we process? Depends on the bird. It depends on the bird. Um, the, the chickens that we would process for meat are the Cornish Crosses. So they are going to be your large birds. Um, they come out, our roosters would come out to be about 12 pounds. Big old birds. They're big birds. Um, and then the roosters, or the hens, would come out to be eight, nine pounds. So that's, you're still looking at a good sized bird. And we would process the, the roosters at eight weeks. And then we would let the hens go for a little bit longer, maybe 10, 11 weeks. Um, but they're, they're huge. And the chicken breasts, no kidding, they are this big and this thick. They're yeah. humongous. And we don't feed them a, you know, a, a lot of grain. I mean, we give them, they're outside, you know, they're mm -hmm. in a chicken tractor, but they, and they get their food, but it's not, yeah. we're not feeding them a super ton. So, all right, Mama, here's a recipe that we were talking about just before we started. And Pura Vida is asking, yes. any fish in your diet? The answer is Yes. But we have to be, I have to be very careful how I buy it. Yeah. Because number one, that whole Fukushima nuclear reactor thing that went on in Japan a few years ago, guys, the, there's radioactive stuff in your fish. Yeah. If you're getting it from over there, it's just that simple. Mm -hmm. There's radioactive material in there. And so we will not buy it unless we know exactly where it's from. Right. Or we caught it. Mm -hmm. Or... It, it, there's a lot of stuff, so we don't have fish as much as we like. Well, and a lot of the fish that you're finding in the store is uh, was raised in China. And okay, time out. The, the, I, the tilapia. I was just going to say that's not cool. The tilapia that's raised in China is generally fed human waste. Mm -hmm. So yucky. Mm -hmm. So you've got to be careful where you get it. Right. But fish tacos. Mm -hmm. We love fish tacos. And where's that fish recipe that we saw that we wanted to put oh, on there? Right here. Um, 
It's right here. Um, we we like to get fish taco, or we like to make fish tacos at least every other month when we can get mahi mahi on sale. That makes the best tasting fish taco. It's a nice thick fish, and we get about a pound. Yeah, because so, you don't use a lot. You're gonna fill no. your taco up with other mm -hmm. stuff. And when we say tacos, not crunchy tacos. There's so soft, soft tacos, soft, soft, soft shells. Here you want to show them. Yeah, go ahead and we'll show them. And so this recipe is gonna make it on there. This week. Mm -hmm. Yep. All right. Here's the thing. Oh, I'm, I wanted to answer a question. Do you do baked potato bar? Yes. Yes. So that's got to go that's on. What, yeah, for sure. I was getting ready to talk about that in a second. Baked potato bar, guys, is cheap, easy. The kids love it because they they're like, ooh, I get to pick this, I get to pick that, I get to pick mm -hmm. that. Well, and if you have leftovers in your refrigerator, like leftover chicken or beef broccoli. or broccoli or any kind of leftovers, you can put them out there, and those are great on your baked potato. Yep. Okay, so looking here. What is a Hawaiian haystack? Someone asked the question. That's our life. Do we do baked potato bar? Yes. Um Hawaiian haystacks are good as well. I have no idea what that is. It sounds interesting because the word Hawaiian's in there. Right. Um, but okay, well, we got to keep going, Mama. So let's keep her rolling. Oh. <laughs> Baker Mom is asking a question about my, about my straw. Where oh, did yeah. Go? Oh, I, I'm sorry. I thought you wrote it down. No, I was, I was in the middle of doing that. Cajun tilapia. It's not Hawaiian. Call them chicken Sunday. I still don't know what that means. All right. Okay. You know, um, just a side note, guys. I saw a really cool hack um, that Alton Brown did for uh, meatballs. You know how they can, if you if you really want a nice crispy meatball, you, you can't have a lot of grease on them. Mm -hmm. So he would he would use a, a regular old uh, ice cream scoop to make them, but then he would set them in a uh, cardboard egg. You know, egg the, the the dozen egg containers. Yeah. That he you put them in the freezer like that, and all of the grease is sucked out of them, right into the paper. What? Yeah. How cool That's is that? That's awesome. Yeah, baked potato bar. Okay. Wine haystacks. Still don't know. All right. Well, moving on. We we need. Uh, what do we got available there? Um. Well, we need dinner for tonight. Um. One. Two, you want something three, grilled? Four. Five. We need five more, or six, including tonight. Okay, chicken stamps is telling us. Um, covered with chicken and gravy, topping like tomato, crunchy noodles, green onions. That sounds great. Well, that sounds yummy. It does sound great. We'll yeah. be looking that up online. Yeah, definitely. Or send us the recipe. Did you get the um, hamburger gravy? I did. Oh, somebody else made, um, I think it was Premi Mom of Twins. She said um, to make... Uh, garlic, like Texas toast, garlic uh -huh. bread, yeah. and you, you kind of hollow out the middle and you put your spaghetti in there. Oh. That sounds well, good. Well, I always use my garlic toast as the vessel. To dip. <laughs> no, I put my spaghetti on the bread and then I put it in my mouth. You know what? We don't have a, uh, we've only got one soup on there, and we generally yeah. don't have a lot of soup because the it's the time. summer. Yeah. However, how about that um, chicken orzo? The lemon chicken orzo okay. soup. That's a really light soup. I it like is. that. Okay. And you can have something else with it. It's you know, but it's a lemon chicken orzo. So you can take only a pound, pound and a half of chicken, and um, really, really make it stretch far. But it's nice and lemony. Um, there's parsley in there, a bunch of good stuff, and it's got the little orzo pasta. So, yum. Definitely. Where are we at, Mama? One, two, three, four. Uh, what? I must have miscounted earlier. Allison Butler, Italian sausages, peppers and onions, and potato oh, in one pan. I, I saw want to that. Try that. I actually saw that the other day, and uh, I thought that looks really, really yummy. Hey, Ben Anagramma, we've been praying for you guys. Hope everything is okay. Hoping everything's. Yep, we've been we've been in prayer for mm -hmm. you. Um. Put that on, because I know we have some Italian sausage in the freezer. Italian sausage. And then you put peppers <coughs> and, peppers and onions. potatoes. Oh, pep yeah. okay. Potatoes yeah. and onions. Yeah. Winning. Taco stuffed crescent rolls. Hmm. That sounds interesting. Huh. 
Can you please share your Skyline recipe? Crops for fun. Um, it's our chili recipe. And if you look on our, our website, just in the on search. On our YouTube channel. Yeah, on our YouTube channel. Mm -hmm. uh, just type in chili and then it'll come up. Because uh, we make that. We pressure can that. Yeah. Yeah, um, it was one of the first recipes we done, we have done. I think it's one it of the very the first videos, videos we did. Yeah, um, so, so you can see how how we used to look. <laughs> we used to look <laughs> two and a half years ago. Um, and then uh, what was somebody asked if about the recipe for the orzo soup? I, we did a video did. on that as well. We did. I think last fall. And here's something I want to try, Miss Silver Kate. We have not done Salisbury steak right and i want to do it because it's so delicious we, we did just we tried recently, and it was really good well put it on the menu maybe maybe a saturday we'll we'll try Wait, it our cast... saturdays are full no no we got two right there oh no one no, we'll do a cast one. iron cast iron baby oh, oh, oh. all right i'll change it and maybe we'll do it on a sunday instead yeah okay uh solid and now we're thumbing through ah get spilled all right. Okay, sausage, peppers, oh yeah. That's great. Oh, you know what we have forgotten, Mama? Huh. Now, if you have money in a budget that you can actually, if you can justify um, 10 bucks, 15 bucks for a meal, do yourself a favor and get a big old chunk of pork. Mm -hmm. Not the tenderloin. No, the just the loin. That's the like the uh, the pork chop, but without the bones. And get, they're you, like this. You can cut that into about inch, inch and a half steaks, mm -hmm. and you put that on the grill after you've marinated it in something like a you know a sweet chili or or a Hawaiian teriyaki kind of thing. Oh my gosh! That on the grill and it makes a mouth watering, tender. Yeah steak that is really really great and so i don't know if we have money in the budget for that that this month but we probably do well we don't have a weekend open for that we usually like to do the nicer meals on the weekend so where, where do we need to fill um we have we need, we need two three four sorry um bandana grandma says she loves sausage and green pepper sandwiches on poppy seed rolls that sounds I bet good those would be really good on the hamburger rolls we make you know what we haven't had in a long time? And I know we're going a little meat heavy this month, but boy, oh boy, a nice um, meatball grinder. Oh, yeah. Meatball grinders. Good. Oh, my gosh. That sounds yummy. In, yeah. Well, we'll see if we've got enough money for that. Yeah. But um, chicken piccata, delicious, delicious. And by the way, guys, a lot of the stuff that we're putting down We'll generally put down the main dish, mm -hmm. and then there will be the, either a salad or a bread or a vegetable. We budget for fresh vegetables. Like, we'll take $100, $150 of the budget, and we'll set it aside. Mm -hmm. And that way, you know, Just veggies. We'll, we'll get the vegetables. Yeah. So, Yeah. Um, that, yeah. Where did I go? Which one? Sorry. I don't know. The chili recipe. The, red, the video that we did of the chili, that's just the recipe. And yep. then we take a quart of that and, and reheat it up after mm -hmm. we've canned it. Um, cook and then some spaghetti we'll, noodles. We'll cook some spaghetti noodles and then we'll pour just, a, I mean, just one big uh, ladle scoop on top of our noodles. And then, and then put some cheese, cheese on, on top, there. And that's, onions. And that's it. That's all we do. And it's delicious. Mm -hmm. Oh, stuffed shells. Stuffed mm -hmm. shells are yummy. Yeah, we, we make those every once Well, we would make stuffed shells when we were growing peppers. Right, because I can't growing. believe it, guys, but peppers, so on sale, they're a dollar each. That's insane. Normal price is yeah. two bucks a pepper. So, okay, what, what, what days do we have open? Thursday, three Thursdays, and a Tuesday. Hmm. What about... Are we thinking more chicken? Are we thinking... We have sausage gravy here. What about sausage. another veggie meal? Yeah. What about another veggie meal, Mama? Are you um, hearing me, sister? I am hearing you. I'm thinking. Sure. I'm just asking. I just was waiting for some kind of reply. <laughs> sure. I'm alone a lot like that. <laughs> 
And then shrivel again. Okay. Wait a minute. Two family homestead has a winner. Italian chicken over cubed potatoes baked in the oven. Yes. Yum. Okay. We're going to rename that. We're going to call that, um, I'll make it with more of a marsala sauce. Oh, that's a white sauce with a little bit of wine. Capers. Okay. Mm. So like this guy. lemon piccata? So we're going to call it, we're going to call it. <laughs> Sorry. Chicken piccata casserole. Okay. Yes. What do you guys think? Is that a good name? Sounds good. Chicken piccata casserole. That sounds like something professional. What do you think? Sure. Um, the reason I was just laughing, I w our kids are playing outside. They're out front. We've got this big window out front so we can see what they're doing. Well, I'm watching Jonathan ride his bike up and down the driveway, and he's bouncing his bicycle. And all I can say think is, okay, he's going to pop those tires any second. <laughs> Okay, other meal. So you got that? Yes, got I that got one? that. Squirrel. <laughs> Stir fry rice, Mama. We didn't have any fried rice. Holy smokes! And we could do we could do fried rice, and what else would be good? Like um, like a veggie egg roll. Yep. Veggie egg rolls and, and fried rice. Fancy pants, BLTs. Ooh, egg yummy. Rolls. All right, we got two. Two more meals. What Tonight, days are they? They're both Thursdays. Both Thursdays. All right. Well, we'll name to next the next Thursday, but tonight's we're gonna leave off the menu. We'll tell you about it. What we made in our live video tomorrow, because we're yeah. cooking tomorrow. Right. Let's oh, see. And Melody or Medley. Sorry, we have the Living on the Dime cookbook. Is packed away. So we packed it. <laughs> All right. Let's see. Let's thumb through here, Mama. Another thing we've been stinky at, we're never, we have not gotten it well yet, is fried chicken. And somebody mm -hmm. told me the key to it a couple days, oh, you know who it was? It was, um, it was Dave, Chris's dad. He said that you soak the fried chicken in tea what? overnight. Sweet and I've, tea? No, just regular old caffeinated what? tea. And I've seen that before. I've, I've seen, never I've seen, seen buttermilk. Yes. But the southern folk are like, tea. And, hey, well, I'm sure they would know. I don't know. I don't I'm know. skeptical until I can try it. That's well, you were skeptical about Mexican street corn. Oh, snap. In your face. Bam. Oh, Mexican street corn. Now, here it is, guys. You start looking for recipes. I'll describe yes, this. I'm going to look in here because we've done all this. Mexican street corn um, that we've seen, what it is is you go ahead and cook your corn on the grill, however you cook your corn, Okay. Then you take, and this is what made us not do it for about two years. We kept going, man, that, I don't know. It just, it sounds good, but, uh, you take mayonnaise and put it all over the corn. All, you cover it. Then you take the so sasson. <laughs> you take sasson, which is equal parts of salt, paprika, garlic, garlic, cumin, cumin, and coriander. coriander, sprinkle that over the whole thing. Then... You douse it down with a little bit of lime, lime and it is slap your mama good. Oh, yeah, it is. I won't do buttered corn anymore. Anytime we're having corn, I don't care what we're having with it, I'm having Mexican street corn. And I got to tell you what, so delicious. I have a weird thing, like a sensory thing. <laughs> like, I can't, I can't stand food on my hands. <laughs> For example, if we go to McDonald's, I will take one French if fry. We go to McDonald's. I will take one French fry and eat it, and then I will wipe it. Yeah, I know. So I I try so hard to remember to put a napkin on his lap, you know, on his leg. And let me tell you what, Mexican street corn makes me go. I don't care that there's mess on my hands. So, all right, Mama, we got to finish up. That's She's watching it. the kids outside. Oh my gosh! Come on, Mama. Come on. Stay focused. Pecan apple stuffed pork and beans. Sounds piddly. It does sound piddly, but it sounds silly, yummy. Country fried steak is always good. What about Daybird Avery Avery's? I'm the same way. Can't stand it. Oh yeah. And that's the thing with barbecue. Oh, barbecue. Barbecue. Okay. Are we gonna go um when we if we pick something like barbecue, um 
we can't go with a brisket because generally that's that'll break the budget. Oh my gosh, we generally use a pork loin because we can get our pork loins on sale um, for around a dollar fifty a pound. What about the chicken thighs? The chicken thighs are sixty nine cents a pound right oh, now. Oh yeah, good call. And they're skin skin on, so you can get them nice crispy crispy. We got chicken already twice that week. We can scooch something around. See, but barbecue chicken isn't like chicken. Because it's, it's barbecue. Like chicken. No, it's not. Well, I'll tell you what. Let's see if pork ribs are on sale. Okay. Because pork ribs are ridiculous. Yeah. Two Family Homes said, I think GFS has pork roasts on sale. Yes, they do. They did. We saw them. And, oh, my Lord. They were literally this long, and they were $1.70 a pound. You can club somebody to death with yeah, one Yeah, no them. kidding. I got beat to death by a pork loin. And I think their their pork butts were, were 15. Barbecue pulled pork on your rolls. The hamburger rolls. I know. They're so good. Let's do that. It's totally, it's totally, yeah. Because we'll do the shredded pork barbecue on there. Heck yeah. Thank you for the suggestion, Norm Barr. So we have, are we done? Yes, we're done. All right, well, let's show them what we've got and kind of go an overview again, Mama. So just tell them overall. Overall, we've got, uh, well, we had, uh, you know, some special stuff going on here. Um, and then we try to do a veggie meal once a week. Like, here's our veggie meal. Well, actually, we've got two this week. And we try to do maybe a chicken once a week, a beef once a week. There's ham. So we've got salt, we've got pork, we have chicken, oh, there's pork again, and then steak. Um, actually, we've got pork three times that week. We well, might have to switch that Yeah, around. we might have, well, yeah, we might and have to switch some stuff around. Even though it's on paper. It's not set in stone. You've got an eraser. So that's why we do this in pencil. Yes. Well, and another thing that, for those of you guys who have seen us do our meal planning, we will generally make concession for at least one change meal Every week. Right. Because don't uh, kid I yourself. I don't feel like having... I don't want soup, or I don't want this. Yeah, it just, it's, it's, that happens. What we try to do, we don't and always succeed. And it's only is, with us. It is, we'll flip-flop a, right. a meal. Like, right. if we're like, uh, I don't want the chicken piccata, but I really do want that chicken piccata casserole. That mm -hmm. sounds amazing. Yeah. And then you can just swap it out for something else, and you just, the trick is, stay on your budget. Stay with your meals. <laughs> the long project says you don't have a hot dog night. <laughs> we just had a bunch. We did just have a bunch of hot dog nights. That's why we didn't. Um, well, I'll tell you what, guys. I, I can't. We can't go cheap on the hot dogs. Mm -hmm. Dollar mm -hmm. dollar thing hot dogs. Just. Oh my gosh, no. No. That's one of those things that I'm like. It's either Nathan's or Hebrew National, because they are really good and they're really all beef and they're kosher. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't want to be eating hoofs and tails and lips and beaks. Gross. <laughs> and feathers. <laughs> beaks and feathers. Pancakes for dinner. That's an excellent idea, Allison. We do that once in a while. We'll have pancakes. We'll have breakfast for mm -hmm. dinner. Nice maple syrup. Mm -hmm. A little bacon. Oh, ouch. Come on. <laughs> Come on. You're so funny. Okay, guys. Um. Yeah, medley. Yeah, I'm, I'm not... So there it is, guys. Here's our completed thing. Usually this takes us about 30-ish minutes. Mm -hmm. But um, we felt like... I, li I like the interaction. What do you think? Oh, yeah. I think it's fun because we get new recipes and ideas from from the folks up that show up. And Chicken piccata casserole. You watch. That's going to be a winner. Oh, yeah. Winner, winner, chicken but dinner. Then, somebody said earlier about... Um, uh, Cornbread waffles and chili. Oh, there's there's a restaurant here, the barbecue restaurant. Mm -hmm. Tell them about those waffles. They are they're Belgian waffles, but they're cornbread. Jal and they and are jalapeno. This, oh my gosh! They have, they have jalapeno cheddar. They have regular cornbread, and then they put pulled pork on top of it. It was silly. Stupid, yummy. Yep. So yeah. budget planning done, done and. Next month, we'll come back and tell you guys, because what we have is we've got a $500 budget for our family of seven um, that that eat with us, because yes. we've got a son that's gone, and Grace and is Grace, on a special yeah, diet. Yeah, she's on a special diet. Uh, but 
we generally hit that mark. Mm -hmm. And even with that amount of meat, guys, you can do this. Yeah. Well, and Jonathan eats for two. So, so does Hope. <laughs> so, yeah. Hope is a peanut, and she She's eats. She's a rail. Oh, my gosh. She eats almost as much as Jonathan. She eats more than me. Yeah. But then again, I don't, I don't really eat that much anymore. No. Mm -mm. I take a big amount and be like, oh, no, and I can't get through half yeah. of what I took. No. So I guess that's good. Maybe yeah. some of this will start. <laughs> I don't know. Okay. Anyhow, guys, hope you liked uh, the planning. Hopefully, some of this benefits you. She's yawning. Sorry. I'm yawning in my mind. I woke up really early this morning. You did. I was not real happy about that either. Yes, yes, yes. So there you have it, guys. Um, share your recipes. Mm -hmm. You know, if you got a recipe that uh, you think would be a great budget recipe and is tasty, we want to hear about it. Um, yeah. Answer that question. Answer that question. Do you save those menus to refer back? Yes. Look at this. How many have we got? We probably have two years we worth. We have over two years here. We save them. And after after two years, I'll put them in a file in there. I don't know why. I probably should just throw them away. Um, well, but, yeah, I, I save them. So tomorrow, guys, at noon, we're going to do live cooking. Yes. Which is really funny because I do probably 90% of the cooking at home. But Mama is the cook when it's live stuff. <laughs> yeah. But that's good. It's good because yeah. you're the baker. I am the baker, so I. You guys got any ideas for tomorrow? I'm I'm fresh out. Oh no, I got ideas. You do? I got ideas. Okay. We're gonna use some of our Thrive stuff, some fresh. We're gonna bake some things. It's gonna be awesome. Yeah. Oh, um, Miss Silver Kate, um, Grace's diet um, actually um, is provided through her insurance. Yes. So, yeah. Well, we. But we. When we had our cow, had our goats, she would have. We that didn't. Well. We didn't use it because it's a lot of sugar. It's a lot of garbage, mm -hmm. processed stuff, yeah. and so that's why we're trying to get back because um, it's not good for her. No, she no. gets sick a lot more often when she's on the the Pediasure. Yeah, when she's taking all Pediasure, she is not a healthy child. Yeah. Um, when she is on raw milk for two of those meals, she'll get sick. Um, yeah, she, she is uh, so much healthier. More vibrant. Yes, running around. a lot more energy. Um, she's she hasn't when we got our cow a year ago, and she started taking the cow's milk and the goat's milk. Um, she was not sick at all, nope. even through the winter time, not sick at all. Um, and I imagine that natural food. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So anyway, see you guys tomorrow at noon. Have a great day. Hopefully, this was helpful to you. Yep. Yep. And I'm looking for my thing to say. There you go. Any market set? Have a great afternoon. Bye.